Did you bring the whole team Musasi squad with you to Paris? Yeah, everyone is here. Uh, Costello is here with uh, so we're with a lot of friends. Everyone is coming in uh, this couple of days. Uh, Friday, a lot of them will come. Today came. Well, Thursday we're gonna they're gonna come. So looking forward to that. Your teammate Costello Van Steen has already fought against Fabian and he did pretty good against him. Did Costello help you prepare for your fight against Fabian? And what did you focus on the most during this camp? Because against Van de Voort and Eblen, you did a lot of wrestling, you told me, but I can imagine that this was somewhat different for Edwards. Yeah, well, I focused on wrestling and um, stand up. Uh... I think uh, he warned me about the dangers, like uh, his left hand is uh, he able to punch from very far distance when you think you're not in danger. He gave me some advices and uh, um, yeah, I'm, uh, we'll see how, how the fight goes. Every fight is different. And uh, Castello was actually injured in that fight. So I think um, I should be able to do a lot better. You kept saying yesterday at the presser that you want one more fight after this one against Edwards. Why one more fight? What is going to happen after that, Gegard? I don't know. Probably uh, it's going to be the last. That makes me very sad. But uh, would your Bellator stint feel incomplete without you fighting for a title in beautiful Amsterdam City? Is fighting in Holland something that you want to achieve before you ride off into the sunset, Gegard? Always... Uh... If, if they come to Amsterdam, I would fight one more. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's up to the government. Amsterdam is a little bit difficult. They're left-wing media. Don't let people fight there. I mean, left politician. <laughs> sure, let's not talk about the Dutch government. Oh, Gegard, right. But, <laughs> but the Netherlands has a new TV deal with Videoland starting this uh, event, Gegard. And of course, it's you who is going to kick off this amazing deal for the country of Holland. Do you think this can also help with bringing Bellator to the Netherlands at some point? Because this has to happen, right, Gegard? Well, I think uh, Bellator can easily come to Holland. Only they want to be, go to Amsterdam. Um, and uh, I think it's going to work out eventually. It's just, so it takes a little bit more time. And um, But uh, I don't know. They were very close last time. So it's all about... Timing, I think, uh, and uh, eventually it will happen, I think. Gegard, we spoke to each other for your before your Eblen fight, and then you said I was a little bit fat, so the weight cut was a little bit tougher. Did you take some better preparations this time? Because you look healthier, you look happy, you know? Yeah, yeah, weight cut is much easier. I'm, uh, I'm a lot lighter this time. Um, uh, I have four kilos, no, three and a half kilos to go. I don't think I need, uh, I don't even need a sauna. Um, last time I, for the last 200 gram, I had to take a, a dumping bag, what is it? garbage bag, uh, <laughs> took it out. Last minute I was running uh, uh, before the uh, weigh-in. So I was a little bit hectic and I didn't want that. So uh, I came very prepared this time. So... Bellator president Scott Coker always talks highly about you. You are one of his biggest signings, which, you know, made, created Bellator the way that it is today, which is a high level MMA organization. How has your, you know, relationship with Scott Coker been, uh, Gegard? Do you always feel respected here at Bellator? Yeah, very much. I think uh, I had a relationship with Scott uh, from Strikeforce. Um, I think uh, Bellator now, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, I'm one of the guys, but uh, I think now uh, Bellator has one of the best fighters in the world. Um, from uh, lightweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, welterweight, uh, the all guys can that can compete and beat the uh, UFC champions. I think uh, the level uh, of Bellator has uh, never been so high, I, I believe. So the competition is a lot more tougher also. You're always so humble, but I can guarantee you, Gegard, in 2017, when Scott Coker signed you, you were the biggest signing ever for the company. Gegard, I'm going to be in the arena on Friday. Cannot wait to see you perform again. Good luck on fight night, sir. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. Dylan? Gegard, thank you for the time. Dylan Napoleon, New England MMA here. Wanted to talk a little bit about this. You know, big stage, another main event. Gegard, you're, co you're one of the 
guys headline in this card. Uh, what's it mean to you to be one of those guys, you know, on such a big card in the main event in Paris? Yeah, it means a lot. I think, um, uh, I think uh, fighting uh, in France, in Paris, uh, MMA wasn't uh, legal for a long time here. So um, every time I get the main event, uh, it's uh, the trust. Uh, I see the trust they have in me. And uh, also uh, coming off a loss, uh, and, uh, a lot of friends are coming. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy to, uh, to be able to fight uh, in Paris and uh, uh, main card, of course. Awesome. And I know you spoke a little bit about the actual training camp a little bit earlier, but who were you able to work with and uh, prepare in this past training camp? Well, I, uh, I trained with my friend Yustri, is a glory champion three time. Um, yeah. He trained also with Alex Pereira for his fight two time. Uh, yeah. Uh, when he fought this out, yeah. Tanya, uh, Costello, uh, uh, same team, you know. Uh, I, uh, I just brought him usually for the stand-up. Uh, he's a uh, he switched to MMA, so he's a uh, he's a guy to watch out for. So, um, yeah. I I actually live in Connecticut. I was able to meet Ustri at the Glover's gym when Alex was preparing for uh, Izzy yeah. the first fight. And uh, you know, great guy. Um, what has he been able to do and help you uh, with preparing wise? Yeah, technical stuff. You know, uh, countering. Um, uh, how to close distance, uh, uh, still, uh, still always something to learn, you know, especially him being a high level striker and he's a lot taller. It's a little bit more difficult. So, um, I think, uh, I will have less problem with the distance in the fight because, uh, of how tall he is. And last one for me, Gegard is, uh, you know, like we said, big stage, big lights. What can fans expect from you come Friday night? I just have to have the mentality of uh, going into the fight and give uh, from, uh, you know, just let it go and uh, just fight, you know. That's the plan. I mean, uh, game plan is to just to fight. Uh, last fight, he caught me. Uh, I, it wasn't like I didn't want to fight, but uh, he caught me in the first round, Johnny Eblen, and then the fight went fucked up after that. So <laughs> so we're just going to go and uh, put the pressure on it. Sun made. Hey, Gagan. Uh, just, just a couple of questions for myself. Do you think the time away uh, from the cage has been good for you? I think you've not fought in just, just under a year now. Uh, it's been good for you to rethink and reignite yourself for this upcoming fight. Uh, yeah, I couldn't fight anyway. Uh, and that's, uh, they didn't give me any fight. So uh, I think... Um, no, not really, because uh, I'm not getting younger. You know, if, uh, I'm still healthy, uh, so I want to keep busy. And um, but I think after a loss, you want to get the uh, win early, so you don't you leave that neg negativity behind you. So I rather had it sooner, and then uh, after a win, you're in a flow again. Uh, I rather had it sooner, but uh, it doesn't matter. And in the pre-fight uh, press conference yesterday, you said that you were glad that Edlin was you know, still the champion. He said he's a good champion. Is there specifics behind that, or was it just for the chance of a potential redemption, one more fight? No, I think I think uh, he was more hungry. He was better, better prepared. Uh, the fight after meet against Tokov, he did uh, pretty well also. So uh, he showed uh, uh, he's someone to be... Uh, recognize the uh, and uh, take uh, not take light. He's a, he's a serious uh, fighter and uh, yeah, he's a, he's a champion for a reason. So, uh, but uh, yeah, first Evelyn, uh, no, uh, Edwards, and then uh, we go for him uh, for an, an, another shot. Good luck on Friday. Thank you, Ken. Hey, Musasi K Williams for Ken Chronicles Media. You were on a four-fight winning streak before being defeated by a tough Johnny Eblen, who sits at the top of the middleweight division. Do you feel as though this next fight against Edwards is going to be an easier fight? You never know if it's going to be an easier fight. I mean, uh, a lot changed in 10 months or 11. Uh, you never know a fight if it's going to be easier, but uh, I think uh, Johnny Eblen is a better fighter. But everyone at this level uh, possesses of different weapons, different tactics. Um, so it's it all comes to how the fight, uh, who implements his uh, fight game. 
So I don't know if it's going to be easier, but uh, I think Johnny Eblen is a better fighter. And one last question. How important has family and friend support been leading up into this fight on Friday? Always important. I mean, uh, I live with my family. I, uh, I train with my family and friends. I mean, it's a team effort uh, at the end of the day. And then uh, in the case, you have to do it yourself. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I would ever be uh, come so far without uh, the support, you know? So um, yeah. Mills? Hey, how's it going? Gay guard, MMA locker room, part of Pop Sports Radio. Just got a few. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Just got a few things I wanted to talk to you about. It seems like in a mixed martial arts sport, you know, some fighters get attention by maybe dyeing their hair rainbow colors and, you know, um, talking <laughs> bad about their opponents and stuff like that um, and getting big on social media platforms. In this sport, you didn't need any of that. And you're right back here at the top of the sport. How does it feel to actually have your skills that you actually harness from the ground up to actually speak for your skills itself. I think one thing about um, America is uh, as long as you're a good fighter, eventually you will get there. You know, I mean, uh, you see Manny Pacquiao coming from Philippines. He became a superstar in U.S. I mean, uh, uh, I wasn't a big trash talker, so it took me longer to get some recognition. Uh, but at the end of the day, people uh, recognize if if your resume is good, uh, you're going to get there eventually. So, uh, yeah. Got it. And just to follow up on that, speaking about resumes being good, I mean, you fought for all the promotions already, so this is why I'm going to ask that question. There's a question being thrown around right now that the Bellator champions are better than the UFC champions right now present. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I can definitely see uh, some of them beating the champions now. Uh Definitely. I mean, uh, Walter weight uh, to middleweight, lighter weight, uh, any of them. Um, heavyweight, uh, heavyweight a little bit more difficult. Who's the heavyweight champ now? <laughs> oh, heavyweight, maybe not. John Jones is always a, a tougher competition. But I think uh, below heavyweight, I, I would give everyone a good chance of uh, winning. You know, I mean, it's 50-50. I don't know. You know, you, you just know when they fight, but UFC is not never going to do that. Got it. Just want to give you your flowers right now, man. I loved watching all your fights and everything. Love talking to you on the media days. For the people that don't know, if you want to watch a real mixed martial artist, watch Gegar Mousasi fights. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Gegar. No problem.